Welcome to the All Outdoors Photography Podcast with your hosts, Henry Doyle and Ryan Taylor, where we discuss all things related to outdoor and nature photography. In today's episode, Henry and Ryan discuss what they're both looking forward to most this new year with their photography. Be sure to check out our show notes at the end of the show and to follow us on Instagram at All Outdoors Photography Podcast. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy the show. All right. Welcome back to the All Outdoors Photography Podcast. Uh, Happy 2021. This is season two episode 23 so yeah today me and henry are going to be talking about um our photographer resolutions for this new year so this could be about anything it could be about traveling the gear everything in between creating content online whatever we both feel like more and less um and more or less you know what we really want to resolve this year mm-hmm. yeah just just anything we any photography habits or any anything we want to change in 2020 or just keep going in 2020 so 2021 me, sorry <laughs> yeah I don't, it feels like an extension already of <laughs> so far at least the same year yeah. but um i feel like for me it's more more of more you know it's not really much of less but it's just i want to do more other things as much as i can you know with which it, with as much time as i have really i don't know about you but that's just how i feel yeah i'm, I'm very similar with that yeah so we're we're gonna start with uh less so basically um what habits or what tendencies do you want to do less of in 2021? So Ryan, go ahead. Sure. Um, so the biggest one I would say is social media in general. I want to be less on it. Um, I really only use social media to promote my photography. I'm, I'm not really, I feel like I'm a very private person. I just don't feel the need to really be boisterous about every little thing I'm doing in my whereabouts. But um, in terms of my photography, um, and I'm still kicking myself because I feel like this is like a bad move in a little way, a little bit of a way, but um, I don't want to use social media as much to promote. I don't know. I want to do more in-person stuff, more um, local, just meeting people that might buy my work or just other photographers that way. And I'm not discrediting social media at all because, you know, I have met like Henry here and, you know, many people, but I want to use less of it this year, I think. Um, spend less time on it, you know, and actually just go out and take photos instead. Um, and this kind of, I, I made a blog post recently about this very topic because I was just thinking a lot about it as the new year, you know, kind of came about. And I'm like, I really, yeah, I want to kind of challenge myself and see how little I can use it, but still, you know, promote my stuff and share ideas and photos with people in my, you know, my community. But I'll just leave it at that, you know, less social media, I think. Um, And then the second one is forcing photos to happen. Um, This is mainly when I do videos because I find I have to force myself sometimes to make you know, a photo happen, and it just doesn't always work that way. It's usually that photo ends up being pretty bad on its own. Um, so this year I'm going to try my best to not force that and just let, you know, just the weather conditions or the light kind of roll out. And um, I've been finding more and more lately in the past you know year or two is that I will actually walk away without a photo purposefully. You know, if I just don't feel like it's going to work out, I just don't force it. You know, does that make sense? You know, I just mm-hmm. won't do... Yeah, I just if I know it's not going to work out, I'm not going to waste my time because then I'm just going to go home and edit this photo that's only okay, you know. Yeah, I so. mean, when you're when you're forcing yourself like that, you you get in your own head and you just end up messing up the photo, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's it becomes less fun. I don't know about you, but like I, I find if I force myself to like look for a composition out, you know, outdoors and nature, it's like it kind of becomes less fun. I don't know. Does that make sense? Yeah, to you? like if if you're like hike at least for me, like if I'm like hiking and I like tell myself I need to get a photo on this hike, I'll in- enjoy the hike way less. Cause I'm always putting that expectation instead of right. just like enjoying nature. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's even with or without the camera. Like I could just be out hiking, um, like you said, or just with my phone only outdoors. And I just find, you know, it's like the photographer's eye where I'm just always looking for a photo, even if I'm just trying to be out there enjoying nature and, you know, unplugging, and unwinding it's like i'm always looking and it's kind of it kind of becomes irritating when you try to because this is when you do this stuff so much you know you're working to make this full time at least i am it's like i kind of do need to unplug from it even as much as i enjoy it for what it is it's like i need to you know just de-stress from it because it is pretty stressful um trying to find photos yeah, they're really great is. yeah so it's it's just a tough thing that i have to i hopefully find more balance of this year and to just enjoy being in the moment even if it doesn't reward me with the photo. Okay. It's, 
I feel like you're kind of trying to return to what photography was supposed to be before social media, you know, just Mm -hmm. kind of a more of an art form instead of a social media ploy, I guess, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It it, it was more innocent. I'll put it at that. Like um, Mm -hmm. I joined, I think I joined social media, well, for photography in January, 2019. So it's about two years ago now. Um, I've been pretty active online um, and building a following, but before that, you know, I was just, it was still about me first and foremost, but like, it just felt more, I don't know, freeing, I guess, you know, there's that limitations or sorry, not limitations, but expectations of, you know, producing work that people will enjoy, you know, and it's, you know, it just, it can sap the fun out of it, I think. Mm. Yeah. Like at least for, at least for me, what I've found is what, like what gets the most likes on like my Instagram page is the complete opposite of my favorite photos to shoot. I like, you know, I, I find that the grand landscapes and even like city stuff, like I I went to New York last, last year in 2019 um, in the fall. And those photos got like three times the amount of likes I ever get on my nature stuff. (laughs) It was just like, I don't know, like, and I didn't enjoy taking those photos. It was just, you know, a snapshot as I was walking through the city. Um, and then the stuff you really enjoy, it can, you know, may not get in as many likes and that can get in your head sometimes. So, yeah, I, I'm glad you brought that up. Cause I, I've been meaning to ask you not even on the show, but just in general is like, do you find like the photos that you like the most aren't really adding up to what other people like the most? I find that really interesting. It makes you wonder. Yeah. Like, like recently I, uh, did this, like, I found this scene with like rocks and like these, uh, like ice and like a Creek. I did a focus stack and everything. I really worked hard on that photo and that like bombed like likewise. It's just, it's, you know, your mind is very different from other people's likes, I guess. Yeah. I I mean, it's, it's photography or, you know, it's all subjective, right. At the end of the day. Um, But Mm -hmm. it is, it is interesting. I think, cause you know, I might be like, this is my best image ever. And then you posted it on Instagram and then like you get in your head a little bit when you start saying it gets less than favorable likes. I get that way so much now, which is terrible if you ask me, which is the reason why I want to like distance myself more from it is that it's just like you get like, I don't know, you just put yourself down a little bit. You're like, I I thought this image was good. You know, you start thinking, at least I do, like overthinking, like what's the problem with it? You know, it almost becomes a problem that wasn't really there in the first place. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, Do you have any other less uh, resolutions? (laughs) I don't, I don't think so. Not the moment, you know, but I guess as this year kind of unfolds, cause you know, we'll see, I guess, but I may think of some more, but yeah, for now, that's all I really have. All right. Okay. So, um, for me, uh, the main one would be to stop caring about gear so much. Like I don't like, I'm not like obsessive over gear, but specifically on YouTube where I could be watching like a video about composition. Instead, I fill my time watching videos about like lenses and cameras that won't improve my photography. So I, I really want to kind of shift towards watching more educational photography stuff instead of the gear stuff. It's just a, a weird habit, but uh, I'd like to learn more about the creative side instead of just learning about camera specs, you know? Right. Would you say like maybe maybe reframing how you kind of consume content, video content on YouTube? Maybe reframe how who you're subscribed to. Like I'm not sure who you're subscribed to that you're watching on a regular basis, but like is it like people like um, Fronos where he's like always talking about gear, or is it more people like Simon Baxter where he's talking about composition and creative mm-hmm. stuff? Yeah, I'm subscribed to like all the like big gear people, like the Northrips and the Frenos photo and all those people. And I watch like all their videos, but I'm also subscribed to like more of the creative side, but I don't, I skip a lot of their videos and I, I'd really like to reshift towards watching those. Right. Right. Like I watch, all, I watch all the Thomas Heaton stuff, but he's like the only in the field guy that I like regularly watch him and like uh photo tripper. Uh, uh, but I'd like I mean, to watch more like Baxter. He's good. Like I know he's, I want to get better at Woodland anyway, so he'd be a good one. I will say Thomas Heaton is probably the one I watch practically all of his videos. And I feel like the nice thing is he does a 50-50 split pretty evenly of like gear, like in in his office and then in the field. And he like, he kind of balances out pretty well, I think. So maybe that might be more of a, I don't know, gateway drug, you know, a little bit. (laughs) And and, and even, yeah, but even when he does gear, it's like he combines it 
with outside a little bit like i feel like like it's not like he a can, yeah just studio stuff right i mean he's made yeah he's made full-on videos in the studio talking about gear but yeah i see what mm-hmm. you mean a lot of it's actual like practice like he actually goes out in the field and shows you what he does with it mm-hmm. like i feel like some of these photographers i won't i won't say their names but some of the big youtubers <laughs> who photography YouTubers with millions of subscribers. I mean, we know who I'm talking about, but I'm not going to say it. Uh, <laughs> they really aren't, haven't been like actual photographers for years. Like they don't really take images anymore. I, you know, it's just, I'd like to shift yeah. towards people who are, you know, active in the, in their field, you know? Yeah. They're actually like established and they have mm-hmm. been for a while. Let's say, mm-hmm. I mean, not to get on a tangent, but like, how many do you think are like fly by night? Like they just kind of come in, swoop up all these followers and likes and kind of leave. You know what I mean? How many, like, really, what do you mean? like the big YouTubers? Like how, yeah. Like how many really, I don't feel like any of them really, I'm not sure if really, how many of them would you say really get like overnight success though? A lot of them take time. Like successful as photographers themselves or? Yeah, or just yeah, or successful on YouTube or popular. On I mean, I, I think the uh, Northrop's they're pretty good wildlife photographers. Um, but like Jared Poland, like he he takes a couple of portraits, but I haven't seen like amazing work from him in like a long time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you're not wrong. Yeah, you're you're not wrong. It's it's like no the hate, first no hate towards him. I mean, he has a oh, no, great no. brand. He's taught a lot of people photography, but he just probably doesn't have time to take photos anymore with his brand it's, and everything. Yeah, it keeps track of news and all that. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, it, it's weird because it's like the first you ever like think like the first thing that comes to mind when you think of someone, and it's like him, for example, Jared Poland. It's like, oh, I just assume I, I think the first thing I think of is gear and like news. You know what I mean? I don't think of him as a photographer. And once again, I'm not downplaying him because, like you said, he does he has done portrait work and all that stuff and teaches people. Mm-hmm. But it's just like a weird thing to think about. And then I may think of and like he, Thomas and, and even like. Uh, you know, even out, like Peter, Peter McKinnon the past couple of years, he used to be big into photography. Now he's just kind of gotten so big that he's like directing stuff now and just is like, I feel like it's kind of separate from that world. Mm-hmm. He's become maybe more of a, like a videographer, I'd say, if anything. Mm-hmm. And like a personality too, like people like his coffee and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing with like video content is you're putting your face out there and it's like, you better have a good um i guess personality and put your best foot forward you know Mm -hmm. you have to be you have to almost make yourself yeah like a personality but to make it sure it's make sure it's natural of course for sure people can sniff Um, out fake and i think mm -hmm. yeah and uh in general i want to spend less time on instagram i still want to post quite a bit um but i want to like spend less time scrolling through my feed because there's just no reason i really need to Mm -hmm. me too but yeah. I already said that <laughs> Instagram is like the one, like I, the worst at and what by worst, I mean, like I spend the most time on cause it is such mm-hmm. a great community on there. I think I met so many people from there. I post photos, you know, everyone, there's a lot of engagement, you know, talking and commenting and it's great. You know, I get inspired by other people's photos, but like still I spend so much time on there when I could be doing, you know, elsewhere, like editing more photos, mm-hmm. putting together a photo book, um, just anything else, you know? Go even going out and shooting, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's that's why we do all this, you know. Uh, do that. One thing, one thing I wanted to challenge myself to is, um, instead of watching a video about photography, actually go out and do photography if possible. <laughs> so. I mean, I still like. I try to limit. Once again, I try to limit like my video watching, I guess, of other photographers because I do enjoy mm-hmm. like watching a select few. Um, people but it's like i do agree where it's like there comes a point where you just you may be like marathoning someone's channel and you go like oh wait why am i doing this i could just go do it myself <laughs> in, a, in a way you know <laughs> yeah I, I remember when i discovered ben horn i watched it all all of his videos in a weekend <laughs> Jeez. Just, yeah that, that goes back i mean it like is ben horn, years. So can you blame me but <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean if you had to choose one i'd say him he's got a great uh-huh. The way he sets them up with like the episodic kind of series is really enjoyable, I think. Yeah. So I saw like uh, all of his Zions, like the, all the locations he would go back to every year for like five years straight. <laughs> oh so, my gosh. That's, uh, that's, that's, that'd be kind of cool to marathon those though. Cause then it's like, you're seeing yeah. the evolution. Cause, Cause if, he, if you, he plans for all that stuff. Like he sets out locations oh, yeah. for the next year. Oh yeah, plans them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And if you watch his very first video, his very first video, I think it was 20 or 2009, I believe. I could be wrong. I think it was 2009, 2010. And it's like, let's be honest, it's not the best. But like, <laughs> compared but for to the like, time, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's, the very, for- he's the very first, um, uh, what was it, landscape photographer, vlogger, I believe, on YouTube? Yeah, he was first vlogger to and show he's, the he's, photography stuff. So. Yeah, and he's so humble about it, too. But like at the same time, that's I'd say it's quite bragging rights if you ask me. Like he was ahead of the curve, and he didn't monetize, so he didn't get as much growth. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, you know, he yeah. just does it for the love of photography. And so. you look at him now, and it's like his production value is intensely. It's like insane. Like compared to that first video, it's like crazy how much it's changed, mm-hmm. improved. I mean, rather. Yeah, for sure. But anyways, on the all all tangents photography podcast. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you got any more, Henry? That you're uh, wanting to do less this year? I don't think so. No. Really? Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. I wanted... So, uh, yeah. But, go ahead. It's okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, we're just rolling right through these, I guess. But that's cool. Um, nice way to ease back into the the show here. Um, so, mm-hmm. season two of All Outdoor Photography. I want to do more of that. <laughs> I want to do more <laughs> of the podcast. I want to focus more on this. I feel like it's a great way to get guests on, hear different perspectives all that stuff. Um, so I want to focus more on that because we kind of just jumped into this halfway through 2020. Um, it was a great surprise. I'll get at that. Cause I didn't think at the beginning of the year, like I was gonna be doing a podcast, but here I am, you know, with Henry and stuff. So it's, it's been really great, but I want to do, yeah, more with the podcast, um, you know, once a week as we have been doing at least with the episodes. Um, And so other than that, I want to do more uh, dedicated birding trips. So that's with or without the camera. I just want to get out there, chase birds, not literally, but like do travel to see birds in particular. Um, Because I started doing that a little bit more last year, and it's definitely enjoyable. It's a lot more uh, rewarding because I I do consider myself a little bit like a lazy birder. I don't really go out as much as I should or definitely want to. Um, So I definitely would do more of that, get some better wildlife photos in as a result of that. Um, Also want to do more longer hikes and backpacking trips, Um, lots more um, overnight camping. That's something I kind of did a little bit last summer um, to some mild results. Um, but I definitely want to try out more this year and do some longer hikes. And by longer, I mean like 20 plus miles in a day. You know, stuff oh, that's, no. yeah. I mean, last year I did a backpacking trail um, here in my area of Ohio. It's called Twin Valley Trail. I made a video about it and a blog thing about it. Um, and I did it twice last year. And that's like about 27 miles. Did that in a single day, both days. Um, so. have you uh have you ever considered doing like a multi-night camping trip um yeah i'd love to well it's, it's funny because when i first the um the twin valley trail or tvt for short um a lot of people break that up into overnights um because there is like campsites sprinkled throughout the whole trail and i was like challenging myself i'm like because i just like to of course i was like why not so i'll do it in one day <laughs> and it's it's doable it's doable it takes about seven eight hours total um elapsed time um, which I mean, for the most times a year is like perfect. Like you get out early in the morning at sunrise and you're pretty much back to your car, your vehicle right before dark. So it works out pretty well, but yeah, I definitely want to do more hiking in general. Yeah. In Are long- there uh, on that hike? Is there any like waterfalls or anything cool to see on there? Oh yeah. 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 Um, Cause this one in particular, it, it's actually, um, how do I describe this? It's sandwiched in between it includes, but it's like, two big metro parks, like thousands of acres in both of them. And there's gorgeous yeah. scenic. Yeah. It's wooded ravines, waterfalls, um, just beautiful displays of old growth, mature woodland, tons of wildlife. I mean, these, these are like some of my favorite places I've ever been to, uh, with the camera and hiking in general. Um, so you're hiking through all of these and in between it is, um, this town called Germantown, Ohio. Um, and so it's like, you get a little bit of urban hiking in there through hiking. But yeah, you're mostly in this really kind of rugged, like as bad as mills nowhere as you can get, you know, for Ohio. Like I barely pass anyone. It's so great. So great. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's cool. It's a cool trail. It's definitely a lot of fun. It's it's you get home in your store, of course, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's that's a great goal. Hiking is so fun. I mean, it's it's weird because of my goals. Best. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, my my goals aren't really that specific i just like to do more of things i'd like to do you know what i mean like, yeah just like increasing what you already did you know just making it better right 
I'm not like, I mean, I, I wouldn't complain, but I'm not like setting out to do like the North Country Trail this year or Buckeye Trail even. That's one I want to do eventually in my lifetime, but I just want to do more of the things I like, you know, so just more hiking mm. and backpacking trips. Um, so yeah, <laughs> well, besides those two, um, I definitely, in terms of photography, I want to experiment more with genres that may, may or may not be um, outside of my comfort zone a little bit more. Um, I found last year I was really kind of branching out and trying different things, um, especially later in the year, um, like old uh, architecture, just like old uh, monuments and structures that are in my area, landmarks, uh, covered bridges, anything with like historical significance, because I do really like uh, local history and reading about it. So I'm like, why don't I just photograph it, you know, at the same time? Um, so I want to do more of that, um, but still kind of keeping the realm of like landscape and outdoor kind of related photography. So I'm not, I'm not really going to do like bow deer or anything, you know, anything that's kind of more weird, I guess, or just the stuff that like, that, that may be the craziest pronunciation I've ever heard. Is that how you pronounce it? it I think it's boudoir. Oh, really? I've heard, I swear I've heard both. <laughs> that, sounds like the, that sounds like the French way of saying it. Boudoir. Like, <laughs> anyways, um, well, whatever it is. Um, yeah. I, like, I feel like it's nice for photographers to have like, we'll call it a blacklist, like genres that never want to do in general. And that's kind of like one of mine, um, just for my own reasons. So I, are, I just there, don't are there any, are there any in particular like street or anything like that? Or? I've, um, I've kind of meddled in street a little bit. I kind of did last year, but I, I don't really, I haven't really shared it anywhere except maybe like one Facebook group. Um, and it was actually the George Floyd protests. Um, but it was here in my hometown. They had a protest. Pretty decent size, but nothing crazy happened really. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I was in. I'm, I'm in Louisville, which is the city of the Breonna Taylor uh, shooting. So I oh, saw yeah, a lot of protests. Yeah. Oh geez. Yeah, I, I can only imagine. I mean, mine had uh, here around Dayton, Ohio, where I'm at. They had the uh, what was his name, John Crawford. It was like oh yeah, six years ago. Yeah, I was at the Walmart, and it's a Walmart I used to go to all the time. I don't really go to Walmart now, but for other reasons, I just don't want to go. Um, but yeah, but it's just weird stuff like that. But um, anyways, I experimented, I guess you could call that street because it is like genuine. I didn't get releases obviously for random people. I mean, I was far away too, so it wasn't anything crazy, but um, yeah, I mean, street would be kind of fun. I think I want to do more of that actually. I like say that, um, but, mm -hmm. and then just more portraiture and more freelance jobs and stuff. That's just, and get, you know, do more people, I think, outdoors, you know, photographing at least, you know, that'd be kind of fun. Mm -hmm. And then um, for my last point, uh, I want to do more videos and blogging. Um, obviously, that'd be the YouTube and my blog, because um, I definitely I'm really getting the writing in general, just in my own life. I've been doing lots of writing these past couple of months and um, especially about my work and all that. So I want to focus more on that. Um, I definitely want to get more consistent about YouTube just because it is such a big time commitment and all that. But I want to try to do out more than a few, put out more than a few videos per month if I can, if at all possible. Um, Cause there, there, there comes times where maybe I'll have like a month or two where I might post one or two videos and I want to definitely ramp that up more and get more exposure that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a good goal. Mm -hmm. Um, have you considered any uh, physical projects this year, like any books, any calendars? Or um, I, I really liked how my calendar for 2021 turned out. So it's already out. You can purchase it with a link down below. Mm -hmm. um, but <laughs> we might as well include a link, I guess. No. Um, I so, will. We, we can. Yeah. Okay. It's our show, right? Mm -hmm. Why not? <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, I, I did make one for this year. I kind of made it last minute in December, but um, it turned out pretty well. Quite a few people bought them and, you know, friends and family and stuff, which is really nice. So I appreciate that. Um, so I'm definitely going to do one this year. I already have like a tentative cover made, like a design, I guess, if you will. Um, so I want to do that again, probably earlier in the year, like maybe in fall, I'll start promoting it and such, have it ready um, to be released and stuff. But um, other than that, I definitely want to get a photo book, which I might start working on soon. Um, just for this first one, cause I'm like, what do I start with that really like represents myself as a whole? Cause you know, the first book's kind of like that pressure of that. Right. At least I think, mm -hmm. 
And so I'm thinking about just doing a big like retrospective. I don't know how many images or pages. Um, there probably won't be text. There might be like a caption, XF data, maybe some like cheesy quotes because I love quotes if you can't tell. Um, maybe stuff like that. I don't know, but um, something like that. But it would be like a big retrospective over, I guess, the past couple of years because that's really what I've been focusing on. Uh, just photos I love, maybe great stories with them involved, you know, just whatever I feel like. But So that might be something I'll look forward to or you can look forward to rather um, making, I might make sometime this year. I'll, I'll let you all know, of course, um, but that'll be fun. But I feel like to kind of go to tie in with the less social media and the video and blogging, I feel like the the result and the reward of creating a video or like a writing piece is much more rewarding than posting on social media. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know, just for me, it's like, I understand YouTube is kind of like social media and stuff and all that, but like, it's the effort I have to put into making a video. It's like, it's rewarding because at the end I'm just like, that was a lot of work, but like, I enjoyed it, the process and, you know, putting mm -hmm. it together and watching people react to it. So there is like a good end result. I feel like from that, you know, and then writing, of course, the same way where it's like, I put in all this time and effort and it pays off by people enjoying it. And it's all free, at least right now, <laughs> you know, I'm not doing paid videos, I don't think, but you know, it's just, it's fun. I do it for the process first. Yeah, I mean, if you if you start posting consistently too, uh, the algorithm might pick you up, and who knows, could be a big YouTuber by the end of twenty twenty one. Ooh, dang! Call me out. <laughs> I'm gonna hold you accountable. I, ch I challenge you, yeah, Henry. I'm I'm holding you accountable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyways, just more of the stuff I've always done. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I've rambled enough. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. how about you, Henry? Anything else? With oh. The more? oh, no, no. Nope. All right. Uh, so for me, um, my first thing is I was gifted a uh, 70s Canon A1. So it's a film camera. Um, it's 35 millimeters, so full frame equivalent. But uh, it shoots on film, of course. Um, so I've been using that a little bit. I got right now I have three 24 uh, exposure film. Uh, so I've, I think I've done five shots so far. Uh, and it's it's really fun. It's like super fun to use. Um, it's not all manual. It's actually an automatic film camera, but I actually keep it on manual because I like the the feel of changing all the dials and stuff and like metering the scene. Um, and I just like the the promise of it. Um, I really haven't done that much, so I'm I'm looking to do it a lot more in 2021. Um, I'm not gonna use it frequently. I think um, just when you know I'm probably when I'm tired of digital and I just want to slow down and focus on compositions. Uh, but yeah, it's just a kind of a side photography thing that I'm excited about for 2021. You kind of answered my question, I guess, but I was going to ask like, why do you, why did you pick it up? I guess, let's say, well, it, it was a gift. So, uh, true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just like, I was a little bit hesitant at first, but then I realized it's, it's you know it's very similar to digital photography but it it just looking through that viewfinder and not knowing what shot you're going to get is a pretty cool feeling um i i definitely i'm not going to switch to film or anything not even close but um it's just really cool i i mean i have a store down the road for me that can develop the film so it's not gonna it doesn't cost too much and it's it'll be quick turnaround time so just an interesting side thing and it really helps me uh just know settings better and how settings affect your images right yeah. right i, I would mm -hmm. see I, I guess my theme right now is challenges but yeah i would feel like that's a nice challenge because it is something that's kind of out of your comfort zone a little bit because we are you and me are so used to digital and like to not have that um that security that that blanket of like oh i know what my exposure is it's kind of scary you know yeah i mean i had never even used a a viewfinder before i was always an electronic viewfinder until i got this film camera so i started on mirrorless and i've always been on mirrorless so this is even my first viewfinder so you have to like wind the film and turn the dials and do the precise manual focus and everything it's it's challenging but hopefully it's worth it once i develop the film <laughs> that's crazy i didn't even think about that that you started with mirrorless too so yeah you really did not have a viewfinder at all no 
Yeah, I've always known what my exposure was going to be. <laughs> There's something else. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Kids these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I at least, um, I took in high school film, but like, I, I didn't like the process. I've told people that, but you know, I'd be willing to go back to it like you are, you know, if I, yeah. I was ever gifted a film camera, yeah. I'm not asking for it now if anyone's wondering, but, <laughs> but if you did give it, I wouldn't complain. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, film's just a whole... It's interesting. It's definitely an interesting kind of deviation from what we're used to nowadays. And also what I like about it is uh, I got two lenses with it. So I got like a 50 millimeter prime and that'll be really nice to kind of, I'm going to try to mostly restrict myself to that lens um, just to kind of add an extra element of challenge to things. Mm -hmm. I also got a, like a vintage telephoto. So it's like, I don't know, it's like 60 to 150 or something. Uh, and it's a macro lens, so I can do some like film macro stuff with that. Yeah, that sounds fun. Cool. Mm -hmm. I bet is there. This might be a dumb question, but like, can you use those lenses on modern DSLRs? Uh, with an adapter. Not, D, not DSLRs, but yeah, with mirrorless cameras. So I can oh, adapt really? it to my camera. Yeah, I'll have to buy an adapter, but I'm, I'm thinking about doing that. So. I mean, it might be a nice little thing to toy around with, mm -hmm. if anything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't have a macro lens, so why not adapt that macro lens to my camera? Right, right. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And then with your new tripod you got, you could just mount it on there, you know, which is neat. Yeah, yeah. That's what I've yeah I've been shooting all my film on that tripod. So that's cool. Yeah, that's that's a wonder wonderful thing about all this stuff is it kind of all for the most part is universal. You know, it all goes together. Mm. Yep. And it's Canon too, which is you know keeping that brand loyalty up. So. <laughs> it's what you know it. Uh huh. <laughs> All right, so my next one is like photography business growth, um, and I'm thinking that'll mostly be through YouTube. I'm I haven't started yet. But I'm gonna try to do probably once, but maybe twice a week YouTube videos. Um, I really want to stick to that schedule this year. I got bad in the last half of uh, 2020, but I really want to stick to that because um, my channel's been like exploding in views recently. Uh, I, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I, I have no idea why because I haven't been making content. But like I made a top 10 images of 2020 and it got like 200 views in like the first couple days. Wow. And I didn't, I didn't even tag it. I don't know why it blew up, but it did. So I don't know. I, I want to capitalize on that and try to grow because I figure, you know, YouTube can lead to just more opportunities and stuff. And, you know, just I like making videos, so. It's not that hard for me to do. So Yeah, you enjoyed the process, kind of like what I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was thinking about doing like in the field videos in 2021. Uh, but what I realized is uh, like I, I'm i doing like a short film for like a unrelated like project for like a art school thing in the summer. So I was shooting some like nature footage. And I, I, I really like realized that I don't like switching between like photo and video when I'm out in the field. Like it just It's tough. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I decided that I'm gonna keep with the in studio stuff, really refine that. Um because I, I don't think I would really be too good at the in field vlogging stuff. I mean, I can only speak for myself, but like when I started making those, um, about two years ago now, it's I was in same boat. I mean, I still am today, like with what you just said, but like, it's, it's tough. And I, the only thing I could say is like, if you plan to be out with the camera, like for two hours and you want to film a video, I would say double that, maybe even triple, you know, your, the amount of time you're out there just so you can get a nice, well-rounded video with good cut B roll and actual photos that are actually good that you're proud of, you know, all that stuff and the storyline that go together to, you know, wrap the bow in the whole package. Cause it is tough. It is very tough. You know, Definitely. I'm pretty sure I've never probably, I don't think I've ever went out and was like, gee, I'm just going to get perfect video first try, you know, or something. It's, it's not, it's not that easy. It is a lot of work and juggling it all on your own too. It's just, mm. yeah, it's tough. So I yeah. still, I'm disappointed, but <laughs> I really, I, I feel like you'd make a great one, honestly. Cause I, I remember you did that hiking Let's go, what is it? I'm sorry. What is it called? Let's go for a hike or something. Short mm -hmm. film. Yeah. Um, I yeah. actually, that, that film I was talking about for the art school, it's another kind of nature film. So that'll be on my channel soon. Oh, cool. Um, that'll actually probably be next week's video for Ooh. starting my weekly upload schedule. So Ooh. 
Uh, it's not the best. Uh, I kind of had to throw it together pretty quickly, um, but it's it's decent. So I shot it in 4K, so it looks nice at least. Nice. Is it is it like the similar to that one video I just mentioned? Like yes, very similar. Yeah. So I'm I'm applying to the same program this year, so I'm kind of cool. trying to follow the same guidelines. So it's like cinematic videography and be or um, excuse me and voiceover pretty much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. I, I really like that video of yours. I honestly, Thank you. Thank no, you. I, I was like, whoa, because you were just kind of like, yeah, I made that for a school project. And I like actually like watched it that day, and I was like, whoa, this for like a, what like two minutes, you know? I was just like, wow, with it. I really thought it was cool. So maybe that'd be more of like your speed, yeah, not I mean, really like a vlog. yeah. If if I do end up doing in the field, I think it'll be more of that cinematic style, I like. Like more like I guess like Ben Horn to an extent where he kind of narrates from the computer and stuff. Um, I know he does a bit of vlogging, but like you know, like the the, voiceover. You film the clips and then just yeah, write the story later mm -hmm. in post. So right, that's that's a good way to do it. I've even done uh, timer to it at least. I've done a video where it's like I won't even speak. Like I'll be out in the field and I'll get photos, but like I won't even speak. I'll just let like the noise and the ambience of it kind of take over. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's an idea for you. I don't know. But yeah, I definitely yeah. like the cinematic kind of feel. And that might be, yeah, definitely I'm not trying to project on you, but like it's your channel and everything. But it's like that might be something cool to try Yeah, time or two like you are. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to uh, kind of expand and maybe get some wildlife video because um, my, uh, my lens has pretty good autofocus, I've noticed. So for video, I actually I had never used it for video until this short film that I shot. Um and I got a better tripod that I can actually hold my wildlife lens now. So <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I might just even uh, put those clips on Instagram, maybe like as the second photo, have like a video to accompany the image, maybe something right. like that. Oh yeah, or on IGTV or, or your like reels. Uh -huh. I'm still like locked. I'm still locked out of reels. I that's don't know right. why. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bummer, man. I, I, I made, I think the I've only made two so far, but the first one I made actually like blew up. Like it was pretty big. Oh, nice. I'm trying to brag, but I mean, no, it was like a thousand views and it racked up real quick. People liking it. Um, a Ooh. couple people probably followed me from it, but you know, it's whatever. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that'd be cool. Do you have a pan swivel tilt um, tripod head? Uh, I do. I have not tried that on my new legs yet, but I think it'll work on there. Um, okay. That's the only thing I'd recommend. Um, you could do with a ball head video work with the telephoto, like you're saying, but like you might want the more smooth, you know, gimbal like kind of fluid fluidity of it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the, uh, the IS is pretty good on that lens as well. So I think oh, cool. it could take a little bit of shake. So, cool. yeah, I would even. You, you reminded me of something because I wanted to try that too, honestly, is do like a wildlife video kind of day where like I just don't – I don't care about photos necessarily. I just go out to get video of like birds or mm -hmm. whatever, mammals or ma mammals that aren't birds, <laughs> but, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah. It, cool. it, it, it's probably easy. It's I don't know if it's easier, but it's, uh, it's definitely different because you – It's easier Yeah, you, you don't have to have that. Right. Uh, yeah. yeah, you don't have to have the high shutter speed or anything. Like it's, I feel like it's fairly uh, easier settings wise. Like you still use the we, 180 degree shutter rule, like the 150th of the second. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, the only problem I could see is like, does that camera have autofocus? I mean, I guess that's a dumb question. Video. Oh, oh yeah, it has great uh, video autofocus. So. Okay. Does it make like a, does the motor drive make sounds when it's hunting for focus? Like in uh, video mode? Not, not on my wildlife lens, no. Okay, because mine, it's like, it'll pick up in the audio. Like, you hear, you know, the clicking sound. As oh, it, yeah. It's uh. terrible. Yeah, so whenever I do video, I make sure, unless if it's like a video clip, I know I'm going to remove that audio track and put music. Mm. I just, like, don't mess with the auto. Like, I would just mm. manual focus and leave it set there. Um, so mm. that might be a thing to consider if it ever is And a And actually, uh, Ryan, that reminds me, um, you, you told me you are considering buying a RP Um uh, Yes. Oh. And the the wildlife autofocus is actually a lot better than I thought. There was the setting that I just had did not have on. I was dumb that I was just not using. <laughs> um, and it, it's like redefined my wildlife with that camera. Like it's so much better. So you could definitely use it well for that. I just wanted to add that before I forget. <laughs> that's great. No, that's great. Um, uh -huh. What was it? I'm just curious. Uh, well, 
it was like the the tracking um autofocus i but i didn't realize that i had iaf turned on so that's why it was like doing so bad like tracking wise oh okay. so i turned that off and now it just locks right onto the bird so cool cool I was like, did you set the Al Servo? Like, I was trying to think of like what else. All right. Um, so my next one is patience, and I have pretty good like wildlife patience, I would say. Uh, but like landscape wise, uh, I really need to do better with like light and like waiting for the right light. Um, like maybe like I get so impatient sometimes that I, like take the shot and like then the cloud comes. Like, say the sun escapes from the cloud, and I'm like. Oh, the light's better, but I already got the shot, so I might as well move on. Like, I have that problem a lot, so I, I just like to slow down in general with my photography. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's definitely, um, especially with landscapes, especially it's like being patient. Like sometimes I just want to pack it up, even after sunset, you know, pack it up and leave. But even like the twilight hour, the blue hour um, of light is gorgeous in its own right, and it deserves its own time in front of the camera. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Same with compositions too. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. looking for stuff. Um, I find with it and without the camera, you know, just pre-scouting and just seeing what you can find and then going back to it later in better light. So I guess those two go together, of course. So mm -hmm. yeah, just being patient. Yeah. Um, so another thing is kind of post-processing knowledge and this is kind of like the software in general. So the first thing I'm doing is better organization um, overall, like in my like editing software, just making sure I can find the photos that I need to find quickly. Um, I had a very disorganized catalog last year, um, so I, I'm already changing that. Um, and also, I want to like expand uh, Photoshop knowledge a little bit more. Um, I actually have I purchased the Nick Page courses. I did his uh, beginner one, but I also still have a uh, dodging and burning and. Uh, luminosity mask course that i need to do um so I'll, I'll definitely do that sometime in 2021 uh, i know luminosity masking is like could like redefine my landscapes like it they could get like insane with those like, it's like <laughs> crazy technique it's crazy challenging but if there's anybody who could teach me i guess it would be nick page so <laughs> yeah i mean you're you're in good hands if that's the case <laughs> uh -huh. that's great yeah, I mean, we did an episode for season one on the, the show here about workflow, and I, I know you touched upon it there, but, like, maybe just run it down for us real quick. Like, how was your system of, like, so, organizing? You, so last year, it was just literally just dump the photos into the catalog. Like, I mean, I, I you awesome. know, I did, my, I did my raw file sorting, but when I would put it in my Lightroom catalog, just be all in one place. Wouldn't be in any separate uh, collections wouldn't be any separate colors, anything, color coding, nothing like that. Hmm. Uh, but this year I have like colors for like final photos, colors for focus stacks, colors for panoramas. Um, and then I also have collections on location, um, genre, so like landscapes or wildlife or something like that. Um, and then star rating, so I can rate the photos. Like if I see one that sticks out to me, I can go ahead and rate it and then maybe come back to it. Um, so I'm just trying to be a lot more organized with that mm -hmm. it's great yeah it sounds yeah. like an improvement for sure like you're using all the tools and resources in front of you like the rating system i don't even mess with that the star rating i just don't find that it's just a waste of time to me like, mm -hmm. I don't and know. yeah but uh i found this feature in my camera that really sold me on it i can actually rate in my camera and it transfers over to lightroom uh mm -hmm. cool. i'm trying to train myself to use it more because i'm like stuck in the you know, mindset of not using it because you know, <laughs> muscle memory, but uh, it, it's a really cool feature. I bet that'd be kind of cool to maybe as a little social experiment, but like maybe in the field, like, oh, I got this best photo ever, five stars or four stars. And then you get home and you kind of go like, why did I rate that? Like you maybe you'll edit it like a few days later and you're like, why did I like it so much? It's terrible. Like change your mind about it. I don't know. I think that'd be kind of neat to see that. Yeah, I, I, I just find it helpful for like uh, like wildlife when I have like the big sprays of like birds. Um, if I see one that's like clearly in focus or doesn't have motion blur, you know, I'll throw a quick star on it just so I know. Oh, okay. Good, ones. Mm -hmm. good point. Good point. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I come home with more wildlife shots than I do anything else, and uh, it is because I, of the yeah, person. I, 
my wildlife shots are the are the most trash ones. Like all the you know, <laughs> like two hundred blurry birds. You know, <laughs> yes. Because si- <laughs> since I'm on since I'm at f eleven, I gotta be really low with my shutter speed, so I gotta have a stationary bird most of the time. So yeah. I gotta make sure keep that shutter speed down. Oh my gosh, the success rate compared to any other photos I take is just so low. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's crazy. But when you get like out of a year, it's like when I get a bird shot that's like really tack sharp and it's like great composition color. It's like, oh, dude, it's one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. Easily yep. doesn't matter what species. I'm just like, it, yeah. So over. yeah, once you nail it, it's so easy to get a good picture. Yeah, like, but it's, that's the challenge. And focus, good light. <laughs> that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you there. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to try those out then, too. Using yeah. the rating and stuff. Yeah, that's a neat idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sure your camera has it since it's uh, Canon as I'm well. I'm curious if that works because I use Skylum still. Um, I've always thought about migrating over to something else or just using Lightroom like most people. But like I'm still using Skylum, uh, Luminar, Aurora. And I wonder if it works for that. So I, I, you've, you've piqued my interest. I want to try it now. See if it mm-hmm. you know carries over because there is a rating system on there, I believe. Cool. Yeah. Um, and then my final thing is just kind of to expand photographer friendships, um, mostly through the podcast, actually, because like I DM with David uh, a decent amount now, which is nice. You know, he's a big yeah, photographer. Me too. Uh, just kind of expanding the, you know, relationships of bigger photographers, even just similar size photographers in the community. So just kind of expanding that through the podcast and through my own Instagram and YouTube and yeah, and maybe even in person a little bit too. There's really not much many nature photographers in Louisville, but you know maybe I can find some. So, I've I found with because um, a lot of my videos are like on YouTube are like localized. Like if it's like an in the field video, I'll put the name of the park or like the location in that, and I'll get like months later, even now, like people watching these videos and they'll leave these like detailed like paragraphs you know explaining like oh I love this park growing up and stuff and it's just like so cool to relate to people on that level. Um, I, I'm not sure if I call them friends, but just like people that find the work and they just like really identify with it. And then, you know, you, maybe you can build a friendship out of that, you know, photographers, hikers, yeah. you name it, you know? Mm-hmm. So I definitely agree with you there. Yeah. I want to go out and shoot with more people too. You know, same. Yeah. yeah. You and me both. <laughs> well, I, I'm, yeah. That, that is one of my resolutions to shoot with Ryan this year. That'll be fun. Oh, thanks. You too, man. Yeah. We'll, we'll get it done. Um, I already got, oh, yeah. I got already got a few people lined up for like this year. They're like, we should go out, you know, with the cameras. And I'm like, heck yeah. Like oh, people okay. I haven't gone out with before. And I'm like, I, I find it always exciting to see like how everyone's like thought process is out there and to, you know, see what they see, I guess, and what they do. Mm-hmm. It's neat to exchange that kind of stuff. I yeah. I don't, I don't think I've actually ever shot with another nature photographer. So maybe I do things oh, really? completely different than other people. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I've done one-on-ones a lot, like with just friends or just random people. And it's like, this can be fun. Um, but even groups, you know, it's just neat to see us all kind of like, I guess, collaborate mm-hmm. and just like exchange information yeah. network. I don't, I don't think this will be uh 2021 for me, but I really like to do a uh, photo workshop 2022 i mean not host one but actually go on one um mm. i'm hoping maybe to get into a thomas eden one i'll be old enough by then so maybe Jeez. patagonia 2022 if i can <laughs> scrounge up the money i'm definitely gonna go dude that'd be awesome yeah i hope you can that'd be cool yeah, yeah they're actually they're actually not that bad uh price wise so i don't know i believe it might be discounts i don't know how that works or how there's he a, lot of, a lot of camping and stuff so oh yeah that's a part of the experience Mm-hmm. I think yeah, they but that, that keeps the price down, which is nice. So. Oh, true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just go, just go wild camping like he does. <laughs> it's free. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Honestly, that's cool, man. I hope you can do that. Yeah, save up the money for it. I hope so. Yeah. yeah I mean, awful. it's 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 better than it's better than buying a new camera. So it's either <laughs> that or get the Canon R5. So. <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess I'll yeah, I guess we'll tack on another point is that um, I was talking to you before the show we hit record and uh, I'm thinking this year when I, I guess another goal I have I want to get a better um, newer vehicle and I've been kicking it over because I'm like but the lenses and a second camera body and I'm like you know just kicking myself because I'm like I don't know which one I want um, but I keep leaning towards the car just because I can travel farther and you know it's more reliable vehicle and I feel like that's better like I can I'm familiar with the gear I have now. I just want to get out yeah. to new places and use it, you know. Do you have Do you have anything in mind, like any brands or anything? For gear or car, or car both? wise. 
Um, so I have a 99 Jeep Grand Cherokee right now. It's It's been great. It's been great for the past three years. Um, those are the best. It, it's, it's great. Um, but I, I, I just, for the sake of variety, I want to get something different, you know, and I'm looking at Subarus, probably like a Crosstrek, um, something newer in the past couple of years. It's mm. kind of what I'm leaning towards. Um, hopefully I'll get it in like the first quarter of 2021. It's so maybe like March or at the latest April. Um, we will see. We will see. But um, yeah, that comes at the expense though of camera gear because that's expensive too. And then like I'm trying to like think it through. I might be able to get some like a lens or a camera maybe at the end of the year, but I don't know. That's that's asking for too much, I think. But we, we will see. We'll see. Mm-hmm. I want to travel more though, farther, you know, just more places, new places, old places. Doesn't matter. Yep. More experiences. Um yeah, that, that's cool. Um, make sure it has enough room to camp in it, though, if you want to maybe. Oh, yeah. I know, like, some photographers sleep in their car. Just you know, make <laughs> sure it can. <laughs> I'm surprisingly, I've not done that yet. I really want to, but I just never have. I don't know. I've had a few opportunities, but, um, yeah, it's like a four-door SUV size. It can. I'm, I'm, nice. I'm not big at all. I can fit in the back. I always put down the rear seats anyways because I don't have kids, you know, so <laughs> more, more cabin space. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, no, yeah. but um, that, that's something I'm looking forward to. So, yeah, should be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. You know, go yeah. out farther, farther away mm-hmm. in Ohio at least, and maybe even out of the state. I don't know yet. We will see. Yeah. Uh, for me, purchase wise this year, um, I am gonna be adding a new uh, lens to my arsenal. So, uh, my birthday is in about a month, so I'm gonna pay for half of a sixteen thirty five f four. Uh, so I'm pretty excited for that. Uh, oh, cool, cool. Yeah, just kind of expand the. I've never shot that wide before, so it'll be interesting. It's fun, man. It's it, it, you know, you just gotta focus on that you know perspective distortion, you know, because most people find that undesirable. But yeah, the wide angle is fun. It's fun to play the wide game. I think. Mm. Um, it's, yeah. it's probably the highest quality lens um, I've had, so it'll be nice to really see sharpness. You know, like I feel like it's a very professional lens. Right. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, at least you're getting new lenses. <laughs> it's just like, yeah. I know. It's uh-huh. it, new gear. New gear is so fun though. You know, getting a new lens. I'm just like, Oh, the, the applications of it, you know, it's always exciting. Yeah. Um, maybe I will get an RP by the end of the year. Um, unless something else comes along there. Yeah. I would probably wait. There's a new like entry level, um, uh, mirrorless R camera coming soon, apparently. So, okay. I mean, I was looking at. But, I mean, the RP is good too. You could just get that once it's on sale or something. It, it'll probably be even cheaper by the end of the year. But um, yeah. right now it'll I'm, probably be down to like seven hundred or something. I was gonna say, yeah, the prices I'm looking at used because I buy almost everything used. Honestly, just saves a little dough. But um, I'm mm-hmm. looking at about eight hundred, nine hundred for just the body. So yeah, I mean that'd nice. be cool. Um, we will see. I'll, I'll keep price hunting, I guess, and <laughs> see if there's a good deal waiting for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Do you have any other um, things, resolutions? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I'm going to start a portrait page soon. Uh, oh, dang. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, kind of similar to what you did. I'm not, I'm not copying you or anything. but uh, It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're inspired. Mainly because uh, I'm going to be a senior in high school next year, and I have a lot of friends who you know want senior portraits and stuff. So, oh, cool. Yeah, that would yeah. be a good place to advertise for that. So Right on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That would be fun. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> updates and announcements. Um, I think, <laughs> let me see here. Um, yeah, that freelance uh, wetlands association that I've been working with pretty much since halfway through last year. Um, I'm going to be starting soon a video project, actually. Um, I photographed three events so far, um, or I did last year. And this year, they're going to, I mean, I'm already in talks, you know, exchanging emails. I've already had one phone call. Um, so stuff's getting pretty serious i guess but um i'm gonna make like a three minute short film talking about some like the wetland pro- properties that they own and there's gonna be like some voiceover not by me but like some of the volunteers my voiceover and i'm gonna record that um, i'm gonna put in some of my photos i've taken at the parks into the video itself i'm gonna th- you know slap some music on there and call it a day that's awesome you should yeah. put some uh, maybe consider putting some like wildlife video in too yeah, I mean, it's we'll see. The only problem is this time of year is because everything's so like, bleh, you know. I mean, 
Oh yeah. Uh, so I think I might throw in some colorful photos in like a little mini slideshow, but then again, it's only like three minutes, so it's not going to be like terribly long. And plus, it's going to the voiceover and stuff. But um, we will see. We'll see. Awesome. Yeah, and then um, actually, as we speak right now, um, I have the very first, I guess, another season two of On Location. Um, so I'm starting that back up this year. Um, I got probably about 30 locations, both big and small. Um, to start off with, I'm going to start with small places, like very, very small, like community parks that you would not think a photo would be at, but I'm going to try it. And so I got the very first video. It's going to be uploaded pretty much right now as we're recording this. Um, so that'll be on my YouTube channel. I'm really start, excited to start that series up again. And um, yeah, keep making videos in that way. So Awesome. Yeah, be fun. And I think when this episode comes out, it'll be my birthday. So it'll be 25. And Ooh, Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> Send me a lens. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> birthday uh, lens. <laughs> maybe maybe when I'm a millionaire nature photographer, I'll, I'll send you one. <laughs> Plot twist. It's a pinhole camera or something. <laughs> uh-huh. They made it with like, you know, I don't know. $5. I can I can send you like those uh Amazon like Vivitar lenses like the oh man <laughs> combo pack or something I don't oh, know jeez that'd, that'd be funny <laughs> uh-huh. uh, a waterproof yeah. bag so I don't drop cameras in water <laughs> that's actually good that, for that, <laughs> that's another I should have mentioned that that's a less um, that's something I want to do less of this year is drop cameras and gear and water yeah because <laughs> I was doing that way too much last year and this year I want to do a hundred percent less. You may have to switch to iPhone photography if you drop another camera. Oh, so. <laughs> I guess if I drop the only camera body I have now, yeah, I'd be stuck with a smartphone. That's a challenge accepted. I mean, it'd definitely be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, we will see. We'll see. But yeah, I, I'm looking forward to this year. Um, as interesting as, I won't say bad, but like as interesting as last year was, for better or worse, you know, I'm looking forward to this year. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, should be a lot of fun. And the show, of course. Um, we're going to have more guests. I got quite a few lined up that are I definitely know they're interested and other ones I still want to ask, uh, big and small guests, and uh, more episodes, more topics um, uh, from us, yours truly, and all about outdoor photography. So we will see. Yeah, well, thank you guys for uh, watching today. Yeah, um, thank you. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you so much for watching the All Outdoors Photography Podcast. You can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and the video version on YouTube as well. You can subscribe down below, and we look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.